Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you afresh for this day and for even this hour. Lord, as we come tonight, we still know this is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Master, we come before you right now just saying thank you that our name has changed because the I am redeemed us. Amen. Thanking you, Father God, that this, even this earth is not our home. Lord, please don't let us be comfortable in this place. Master, we pray right now, even while bowing at the foot of the cross, for your goodness, your grace, kindness, mercy, and your love. Father God, and right now we pray that you will Rescue me from me. Hide me behind yonder's Calvary Hill that all that look this way, none will see Billy, but all will see Jesus. God, how we praise you and love you. In the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah to the glory of God. In Jesus' blessed name we do pray. God's church says, Amen. And hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor, thank you so much for letting us come to the foot of the cross tonight. Stand in your anointed place. I, I, I want to look at a couple of scriptures and then we'll see what he goes from there. <laughs> He's, as we've been sharing uh, this year about first fruits, I believe it would just be fitting for us to look at the first verse for first fruits. Amen. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Hallelujah. God is, He's an awesome God. It just broke out us praising him on Sunday about him being an awesome God just because our little trach baby who had just had surgery about three weeks ago and, and it wasn't until she was, uh, uh, she was in the hospital up at Cozair. She'd had surgery on her thyroids and on her throat and we did not know. She hadn't spoken in about three weeks, wound up. Uh, they had to stat flight her from Litchfield to Cozair and... Uh, they did not know that her trach was stopped up, and so they were, they were doing the pump thing. I don't know what you call it. Some of you in here probably know, with the little bottle thing, so that she didn't get oxygen on the way to the hospital, so they said she would most likely be brain dead. But somebody forgot to consult mm. the healer. She uh, didn't, was, had some problems. Her eyes rolled back in her head. She looks like she was dead, but somebody forgot to consult the great physician. Yeah. On Christmas morn, it was Christmas, not Christmas Eve, but Christmas day, her gift to her mom and daddy was, Daddy, I love you. <laughs> She's walking and she's talking and she's home and, and they're loving her and we're just praising God how first things that he's been doing, first fruits. I, um, I want you to know that what he's been doing and I thank you for your fasting and praying and um, let me just tell you this and then we'll get to the scripture. But on Sunday, at our service, he's been bringing folk and we don't really know who they are, or why they're there other than just feed whoever comes. That's the way we do it in the past then. So uh, one lady who'd been coming for a few, in fact, she's an auntie to the little Trek baby named Maverick. And so at the end of the service and after communion, and she uh, comes and makes her way to me and says, I want to be saved, but I don't know how. Yeah. Probably 50, 60 years. I really don't know how old she is. And uh, uh, we shared with her what the word of God says. She bowed and and it looked like as the church had disassembled, God had not 
dismissed. Amen. She got saved, stood up and told the folk who were there, and, and uh, we just praising God. Amen. Amen. How that even when your service is over, his service is not. Amen. Amen. And so I want to, and, and, and then God just been showing me these things, and I know it's because you've been praying and fasting is because on yesterday, at the funeral of a young man, uh, 50 years old, and uh, he's, he had once uh, a pastored, and uh, because of some circumstances, he, he, had, he had come here from Alabama. He'd been here probably 13, 14, 15 years, and uh, uh, had, had quit preaching, hadn't been at church. Had, all of these things had not happened, but, but what I want you to understand is even, even, God is able to do something that, that I know I'm old, but I ain't seen it all, Pastor. <laughs> Yesterday at Mike Campbell's funeral, and after the funeral, and we went to the, to the cemetery to, to deposit the body, waiting for the trump of God. Amen. Mm. Amen. And so while at the cemetery, and even after dismissing the folk, it looked like the service was over. There was one lady who, in fact, it was his, 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 his wife's auntie. Stood in the cemetery, dead man's ground, and said, I'm going to come to the church and I'm going to get saved. I said, why not, not right now? Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. She prayed in the cemetery and got saved in the graveyard. Amen. I've never seen God do that before. Amen. I, I'm telling you, God, Pastor, Pastor Brian's always saying God's going to do a new thing. God's doing a new thing. I saw her stand there, and I saw her crying, I saw her weeping, I saw her cry out to God, and I saw her stand and confess, he saved me, amen, in the graveyard, in the graveyard, amen. Don't, don't, I, I pray tonight that you don't expect some, some, something uh, except for, for what you think he can do, because God is going to do what he wants to do, amen. Genesis 1-1, and I, I'll try my best to, to be obedient to the Spirit tonight. The word of God for the people of God says, are we, are we, do, yeah, yeah, just stand up. Do I need to flip it or? I'm going to stand up. We're taping you. Don't, <laughs> well, I think it ought to be over there. We want to see you, brother. Genesis 1-1. Are you, are you ready? Yes, sir. Well, just, just stand on your feet for a minute. It gets you a little blood to the brain and then we'll, I'm going to read three passages of scripture. How many knows that the word of God begins with the word in? All the words in the Bible begins with I, in. I believe he's trying to tell us something already, don't you? He said, that, 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 that's what it says, that's what it says. Uh, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Just in. I believe I could just preach that, Brother Brian. He, oh, hallelujah. John, the gospel according to the book of John, John chapter 1, beginning with verse number 1. Once more and again, we find that word that evidently, evidently everybody that you see ain't in because it begins with, John the Revelator says the word is in. In, 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 in that right? It says, it says, in the beginning, there it is again. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The original text, they tell me, Brother Preachers, y'all, maybe you can back me up. The original text said, in the beginning was always the Word, and the Word was always with God, and the Word was always God that's just in the beginning in the beginning first John and I'll try to hasten there and I know you think it's gonna say in but it doesn't say in and I know I've got you and I know I got you jumping and skipping but just listen to what it says it says it says first John chapter 1 verse 1 it says that that which was from the beginning which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. That, amen. You may be seeing the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, 
Been as we heard tonight, and I've been praying and asking God what uh, I just give you those three verses. May not even touch either one of them. I don't. I, it doesn't matter. Amen. I, I just, I just liked them. Amen. <laughs> Is that okay? I just, I just liked them. That's good enough for me. Amen. God is such an, an infinite God that we hold him captive to what we can think and feel. Amen. Even what we can imagine. And so, and so tonight I, I challenge you, throw everything you know at the door and just say, God, have thy own, own way. Lord, Lord, what, I, what I'm thinking is going to happen may not happen. And so, and so it's really not, not up to us, but it's really up to you. And Lord, if you want me to dance, I'm going to dance. And Lord, if you want me to sing, I'm going to try to sing. And God, if you want me to testify, I'm going to do that. But more than anything, Lord, I just, I just come because I want to serve you in a new way, in a, in, in a beginning way tonight. I want to draw the line in the sand and say, and, and, and say for God I live and for, for God I, I die, hallelujah. Because I sure enough know within my spirit that it's in you, Lord. That we live and move and have our very being, Amen. With that, if you withdrew, uh, Hallelujah. What we breathe right now, all of us would be dead men, Amen. We would be like Adam was in the beginning when you heaped up some dust that just looked like you. But I'm so glad that you breathed on them, and we become a living soul, Amen. Anybody here ready for God to breathe upon you tonight? I want Him to breathe on me afresh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've got to, I'm going to give you one more verse. Mark says, uh, my Bible teaches me that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, Matthew and, 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 and Luke and, and John uh, have more to say about this gospel uh, than Mark. Amen. Matthew, 28 chapters. Uh, how many is in Luke? 24? Yeah, probably something like that right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John, John 20 something, amen. But, but Mark came up and Mark couldn't come up with only with only 16 chapters. Because Mark, he cut to the chase. He didn't, he didn't keep the fat on the bone. He just, he just got straight to the point, amen. He wasn't like some long-winded preachers. <laughs> Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. He kept using the word immediately. I got to get this up out of me. Praise be unto God. And so he only, he only had 16 chapters, and, and 12 of those he did what my English teachers always told me not to do, was he, he began all of those 12 of those, of those 16 chapters with the word and. A connective conjunction, amen. He's already messed up, ain't he? And still, and, and, but, 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 but I'm going to go to Mark tonight because I love what Mark had to say. Mark says, and, 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 uh, well, you know, Matthew says, and let's talk about uh, Jesus being a king. And Luke said, well, let's talk about him being a servant, amen, be, 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 being on his, on, his man, on, his, on his human side, amen. Matthew said he was one way, and Luke said he was another way, and John said, forget all that human stuff. I, I, I just want to talk about him being a spirit, amen. Mm -hmm. But Mark said, forget all that because he's not, no more than a slave, amen. And it's, I don't know about you tonight, but I praise God tonight that I'm a slave to him, amen. Yeah. He owns me. He bought me. He paid for me with his own precious blood. Amen. And so Mark said, Ain't, it don't matter where a slave is born. Amen. What's more important is where is he going? Somebody here tonight. Hallelujah. It ain't, it ain't about your pedigree. Hallelujah. It ain't about who your mom and daddy was. It ain't about you being a member here at Alcorn. It's about have you been born again? By the blood of Jesus. Have you been filled with his Holy Spirit? Hallelujah. Are you walking in his anointing? Amen. That's what it's really about. Not where you come from, but really where you're going. So Mark says this. Mark says, Mark, Mark, Mark's the only one that says, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Just the beginning. Amen. And so I want, I, 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 I want you to understand tonight, the reason we give God first fruits it's because the gospel began first in the mind of God. Amen. God, if God hadn't thought it, it would have never come about. Somebody here tonight, I, I know you think that we came up with this. I know you think really that, that, that it, was a, it was a New Testament. Because uh, uh, no, 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 no. God said it first. In fact, in fact, in fact, he thought it before he ever said it. 
And that's the reason I owe him my first fruits. Amen. Some of us are holding back on him because we don't realize, hallelujah, that the gospel began in the mind of God. God thought about you. God knew you. He knew your whole being, your whole plan, even the day you were going to die, even before your mom and daddy met each other. That's the mind of God. Amen. And somebody here tonight, I, I, you don't give God credit enough. Amen. You're breathing and you're living and you're moving because of God. Amen. Hallelujah. He placed us on planet Earth. Amen. And made us uh, his children. But not only that, he put us in the freest country in the world. I, this is the best time in the world to be living when you can see God saving souls and setting folk free in the freedom of God and the liberty of serving him. Hallelujah. And we then don't even stop to say, thank you, Lord. It began in the, in, in the mind of God. Hallelujah. So I want you to understand. Uh, the second place that the gospel takes place, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to take a text and preach here in a minute, but I want you to understand where the gospel came from. The second thing is the gospel began in the mind of God, but the second thing is begin, began with the incarnation of Jesus Christ. Now, I know you think that that's just a big word and it really doesn't have anything to do with you, but let me tell you something. It took sacrifice. Yeah, yeah. yeah because, because Jesus, who was God, who was, who, who was God himself living in, in, in heaven's glory, Took time out. Yeah. Made himself so small that he could become an embryo. That's God. Amen. For the purpose of living and then dying for me. Amen. Hallelujah. He became in the, the incarnation of God in mankind. Amen. I know God knew everything, but through Jesus Christ, he felt everything. There's nothing you can go through that he doesn't know Nothing, no temptation, hallelujah, no suffering, hallelujah, no, no dysfunction that you're going through that he doesn't know about, right. hallelujah. And he came to show you that we can overcome, amen, yeah. hallelujah. Why? Because we are the first fruits, amen. Yeah. Hey, he lives inside of us, the incarnation of Christ. And so I began to, I began to wonder, I said, if there's a first one is the, Go with me tonight. Mind of God. Second place he showed up, the gospel shows up, is in the incarnation of Jesus Christ. Go with me tonight. I'm just going to teach for a little while. Yeah, yeah. The third place that God has to originate is in the heart of the believer. Right. What would it matter if it had been in the mind of God, if it had been the incarnation of Christ, if it had never come inside of my heart amen hallelujah and so as i as i began to wonder i thought lord lord what are you really trying to show us and so he began to, he began to, he began to press this on me in a mighty way on a, in a mighty in a mighty way he said he said what i'm what i want you to understand the reason we're having first fruit tonight and the reason that we're going through what we're going through is because of this because i want you to do what i want you to do tonight is just Try another way. Somebody say that with me tonight. Try another way. <laughs> Brother Brian didn't come up with this idea by himself. Holy Spirit woke him up in the middle of the night. God began to speak and press on him because God is telling us not, not only Elkhorn, but he's telling the kingdom of God, hallelujah, that you ought to try another way. Amen. I, I don't know about you, maybe your way, if, if your way's not working, you do know the definition of stupid, don't you? <laughs> How's that working out for you? <laughs> Keep on doing the same thing the same way and expect different results that will not work, amen. And so, and so, and so God said, hallelujah, I'm going to try a different way. He tried a different way through Jesus Christ. And now he's trying a different way through you, amen. Hallelujah. Well, come on, brother preacher. Look with me for just a minute. Mark, who I love, and, 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 and the second chapter of Mark, I told you Mark didn't have English skills, and so <laughs> chapter 2 begins with the word A, and I'll, get, I'll read four verses, and I'll preach for just a minute, and, and we'll, we'll do what God says do. Uh, Mark chapter 2, 
It says, and again, he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway many were, were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them, no, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them, and they came unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of the four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. That's trying to another way, amen. The only way we'll ever begin to give God at first fruits is if we try it another way, amen. In the Old Testament, they tried it their way. They tried it with the prophets and the, and the preachers, hallelujah. They, they, they tried it with all of those, hallelujah, and none of those ways worked. And so God said, I'm going to try another way. So he sent Jesus the Christ, amen. This is a vast picture of Jesus coming, amen. This passage of Scripture tells us that Jesus was in the house, and that it was noise that he was there, and Jesus was preaching, hallelujah. But four of them said, wait a minute, if the ushers won't let us in, Let's tear the roof off this sucker. <laughs> Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. That, 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 that's trying another way. Amen. Hallelujah. I watch this. I watch this. Hallelujah. And so, and so the, the, the first point that I want to make tonight, if we're going to give God our first fruits, is, is, is we have to try it the way God tells us to try it. Amen. I don't know about you, but all of us up in here, we tried it the way some of our brothers and some of our sisters said, but God says, hallelujah, I've got a way. There is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the, but the, but the end thereof is death, hallelujah. Yeah. And so God's way is the right way. And so I want you to understand tonight, hallelujah, that it doesn't matter how many ways we come, amen. At the end of the day, there's only one plan, amen. Do you know what God's plan is for each and every one in the kingdom of God? It's the same plan. What is it, brother preacher? Two words. Jesus told Peter, after Peter had denied him and, and Jesus had rose from the dead, hallelujah, you, you remember the story? That they were out fishing, they decided to go back and do what they'd always been doing, but Jesus had made them fishers of men, but they were stupid enough to think they could do it again. Hallelujah. And so Jesus catches them out there fishing, and he tells them where to cast the nets, and, and, and at the end of their, their fishing adventure, Jesus is standing on the shore. Somebody said it looks like him. Yeah, it looked like, it looked like him. Uh, just from a distance, amen. Hallelujah. I, 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 but, but Jesus said, come on, boys. Yeah, I've got some meat for you to eat, amen. And he had fish and chips on the grill, amen. And so when they got there and after he fed them, amen, because God, he'll always feed you before he makes you think. That's the reason most of y'all come to church on Sunday morning don't eat breakfast. Amen. Now, they may feed you some donuts and, and coffee here, but by the time Brian gets through preaching, most of y'all are hustling, trying to get to a restaurant buffet somewhere. <laughs> but Jesus gets through feeding them, amen, and he feeds Peter. Hallelujah. He said, Peter, come on and walk with me. And he said, do you love me? And Peter said, Lord, you know I love you. He said, feed my lambs. Mm. They walked a little further. He put his arm around him, Brother Brian. He said, he, said, he, said, he said, do you love me? Peter, Peter said, yes, I love you. He said, feed my sheep. And so then Jesus walked a little bit further and looked him dead in the eye and he said, do you love me? And Peter said, Lord, you know. Amen. I don't even know whether I love you or not, but you know. Amen. He came to the right conclusion. Amen. Then he said, feed my sheep. Amen. And then he, then he began to tell Peter what, what, what he wanted him to do. And Peter turns around and says, what about John? And most of us are con so concerned about somebody else that we fail to do what God's called us to do. And Jesus looked at Peter, and he's looking at us tonight, and he's saying, follow me, amen. Yeah, the plan for everyone in the kingdom is follow Jesus. Amen. I don't care if you're the pope, the priest, the preacher, I just a pew warmer, follow Jesus, amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's when you give him your first fruit. It ain't about what you think. It's about me following Jesus. Yeah. Ain't about how, if my wife don't go, I got to follow Jesus. If my kids don't go, I, if the church don't go, I've got to follow Jesus. Yeah. And sometimes every once in a while, you look around and ain't nobody with you. But you just keep on following Jesus. Hallelujah. When I watch this passage of Scripture, here in the second chapter of the book of Mark, when they get to the church house and they can't get in, hallelujah, the first thing that they find out 
is folk will begin, when you begin to do it, to try it another way, the first thing folk will do is try to turn you away by denying you access. Amen. And you're looking at me up in here and say, wait a minute, we Christians, we don't deny nobody. Well, you deny them when you say you don't look like me, smell like me, dress like me. And, see, and sure enough, you ain't going to be me. Amen. Hallelujah. And the first thing that they do, they came in. They, they'll come in and they'll get a taste of the gospel and they'll feel the Holy Spirit. And the next thing you know, they, they're left because guess what? That everybody else up in here is in a circle, hugging and loving each other. Amen. And they're just on the outside. <sighs> The devil's plan tonight. The reason we won't give God our first fruits, hallelujah. He wants to deny us access, amen. amen. Anybody here beside me know that, that the devil knows if he can divide us, he can defeat us, amen. amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I don't care who's denying you access to Calvary. You can come anyway, amen. Yes, hallelujah. It's always open, 24-7, praise be unto God. You can make your way to the, to, to the, for the cross at any time, amen. And no matter what you've been through, mass murder, I don't care what you've been through, the, 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 the playing field is level for everybody at the foot of the cross. Amen. Stop denying people access. Amen. And we fail to tell them that we've messed up. Anybody up in here beside me ever messed up? Few people raised their hand. <laughs> but you know what? I, I love that Pastor Scripture said, We all have. Even the pastor? Even. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yes. The Bible said, We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. All means all. I don't care who you are, where you are, where you came from, or where you're going. Hallelujah. Everyone in the race, human race, has, has sinned and has come short of the glory of God. Amen. Amen. And the only way to get back is get under the blood of Jesus. The only way to get back is get to the foot of the cross. Praise his holy name. Hallelujah. And so when you've been denied, amen, every once in a while, you may not have to get up in their face and tell them, but I remind you in your heart they've messed up too. Mm. Hallelujah. I'm glad he put repentance in there, don't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. So not only did they, did they, did they deny him access, but the next thing that I noticed but at this passage of Scripture, hallelujah, is they, they, they wanted to disciple their own way. Mm. You say, well, Brother Preacher, what are you really trying to say? I'm saying, I'm saying the church house was full before it was Noah's that he was in the house. Amen. How many of us fill up? We make sure it's room for us and all, all of our kind before we ever let anybody else in. Amen. You looking at me like I don't know what I'm talking about. I've been around long enough to know the most segregated hour, uh, uh, hallelujah, 11 o'clock on Sunday morning, amen. Hallelujah. When we all go to our own kind to worship our own God in our own way, amen. And we talk about hallelujah. That God loves everybody. Amen. Well, let me, let, me, let me tell you this. Stop looking at, at what's on the outside and begin to look at what's on the inside. <laughs> Man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. Amen. Well, what kind of heart do you think that, it, the, that Jesus saw? The, in fact, the Bible makes it plain. It said that Jesus saw their faith. Didn't have a thing to do. With the man outside, didn't have a thing to do with the one who was prayer, didn't have a thing to do with him, amen. But it was all about them. And so I stopped by to tell you now, when we begin to give our first fruits, when, when we be, begin to understand that God's plan is follow Jesus, then these four guys said, let's get it together and let's get him to Jesus. In fact, they did. You know what they did? What I thought was so amazing because if it had been me, first thing I would have done, I would have let him down for long. And I'd make sure my face was in the hole. Jesus, I got him there. Amen. It was me. It was my idea. The rest of them three boys, they just came along for the ride. But it was me. Jesus, you know me, don't you? Hallelujah. It ain't about you. And so I said, God, what first fruits do you want us to bring to the kingdom? Let me tell you this. He said, he said what I want you to bring to the kingdom is this. I'm looking for somebody. Hallelujah. 
that the church can shout on that will bring somebody that does not have the Holy Ghost. I want these brothers to go with me. They got the Holy Ghost. I want to run with him. He's got the Holy Ghost. He's got the power. He's got the deliverance. I want, I want to ride with him. Amen. No, no, no. You ride with Jesus, and all of a sudden you'll kick up some folk who ain't got the Holy Ghost. Amen. And your goal is to get them in the house of the Lord. Amen. Even if you're on the outside. Hallelujah. That's first fruits. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me close. I'm going to get out of here. Huh. I looked at this passage of Scripture. I began to ask God. I said, God, what are you really trying to tell us? He said, it's more important about those who are on the outside than it is about those on the inside. I begin, I, I don't know about you. Is there anybody else sitting here beside me that pays your tithes? Well, if you don't, you ought to. I didn't get a, not one person raised their hand up in the house. <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't know what you, I don't know what you've been teaching them, Pastor, but it'd be all right if I tell them not. Y'all ought to pay your tithes, amen. And y'all ought to pay them here. And then y'all ought to give an offering too. Looking at me like, where'd that come from? We come to the house of God. We feel the Holy Spirit. We give our tithes and offerings, and we think that's enough. That's not first fruits. First fruits are the lost, the undone, the unsaved. Hallelujah. Those who are sick and those who are miserable. Those, hallelujah, who are messed up and they think it's all right being messed up. You can be whole tonight. The blood of Jesus makes you whole tonight. Hallelujah. Uh, I began to look at that, this first fruits. I said, God, what, what do you expect me to do? I said, Lord, I've been, been through uh, preaching and uh, teaching and living it and uh, talking it and uh, going to conferences and going to associations and, and all this kind of stuff. And he said, that ain't good enough. You got backslidden people all around. He put me in a community. Me and my wife, we, we, we talk about it all the time. The community that we're in. There's a whole lot of folk live around us that have quit on God. On the right and on the left and across the road and down the road and driving past and waving every day and lost. And, and now, they're, now they're second, third generation lost because they got mad at somebody in the church house. Hallelujah. And began to, and they think that it justifies them by saying, I, I got hurt once. If you ain't got hurt but once, you ought to be on the front pew, amen. <laughs> you ought to be the first one to give praise to God, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah to the Lamb. I've got them around you. And so you can't quit. I, there's your first fruits, amen. To restore the backslidden, to restore those who are, who are cold and undone, and to get the unsaved saved, amen. That's the first fruit that I'm expecting of the church tonight, amen. And so quit praying, giving your own little pity party about it. Hallelujah. How bad it is for you. And you begin to say, God, use me to bring that lost sinner to you. Uh, Father God, whatever it takes, uh, like Paul said, uh, I'll, I'll be all things uh, out of all men, uh, uh, that thereby I may win one, amen. One. Just one. He ain't asking you for everybody, just one. And they dying every day. Hallelujah. Some, some are going to heaven, some of them some were saved. But some happened along the way and they messed up and now they're going to lose their reward. Amen. But some of them have never been saved. Second and third generation. And he's got us right beside them. Hallelujah. I want to tell you tonight as we come and as we said the first fruit, you got to bring in the center man. You got to bring in. Hallelujah. You, you, must, you must live a life so that those who are, who, who, is it anybody in, up in here beside me ever backslidden? Yeah, and I believe y'all getting it now. Y'all kind of yeah. backslid. I backslid on God. Save me. I've been, I've been saved. Let me, let me stop and think how old I am. 51 years. I was backslidden on God probably for 18 years. I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't unsaved. I was backsliding. And you know what? I was backsliding in the church. A whole lot of people in the pews 
that got bald tires on your trucks. <clears throat> oh, they up. And you think you're going, but you ain't going nowhere. Amen. I hid in the church and backslid on God because I didn't want to give him my first fruit. I wanted to have it my way. In fact, I told him, I said, God, I'll go and do what you called me to do, but I want to have some fun first. And if I'd been God, I'd have slapped me so hard in the back of my head. I'd have, I, brother, I'd, I'd give me a backhand like Aunt Belle used to talk about. She said, she said I'll, I'll knock you so far that when you get back, your clothes will be out of style. <laughs> That's what I'd have done. Amen. That's what I'd have done. That's what I deserved. Amen. But God never stopped loving me, amen. Because he said it's some fruit inside of you. And the first, I, I'll not stop till I get your first fruits curl, amen. And he kept loving me and kept loving me and kept calling me in the midst of my messing up, in the midst of my saying one thing and doing another, in the midst of my undoneness. God loved me so much, church, hallelujah, that while I was ungodly and unholy, Jesus still died for me, amen. Yeah. Didn't wait for me to get right, but come as you are right now. Yeah. Ah, he knows. Yeah. If, he, if he figured out the plan of, of the gospel in his mind, let me tell you something, he knows about you. He knows your heart. He knows where you stand. He knows what kind of grudge you're holding. He knows, he, know, he knows for sure enough where you're going to be tomorrow. But tonight he wants you and he wants all of you. So tonight as we come and we thank him for the beginning of the gospel, the mind of God, the incarnation of Christ. But then the believer's heart. Maybe you gave him your heart a long time ago. But how long has it been since you went to the, to the foot of the cross and said, God, I'm sorry. Forgive me for my Tuesday through Thursday. Forgive me, hallelujah, that I just come every once in a while. Forgive me that when I come, I don't come bringing fire. Forgive me, hallelujah, that I come for the preacher uh, to fire me up in the choir, to raise me up, and, and the deacons praying, hallelujah, to lift me up. Forgive me that I don't already come on fire, hallelujah, that somebody perchance will just touch me, hallelujah, and feel you. Forgive me, Lord. Hey, forgive me. I come before you tonight. God, I give you my, fr my first fruit tonight. Father, my prayer tonight is this. If it's anything inside of me not like thee, please remove it as far as the east is from the west. That's every thought. Mm. Anything inside of me not like thee. And you're wondering why. We've got weak and sickly, and we take communion Sunday after Sunday, hallelujah, and know we're not right with God, hallelujah. And he says that, that, that when we do it that way, when we hold on to what, what we know we ought to give to him, that we drink damnation unto ourselves. You didn't give it to me. I, gave, I, I, I purposely committed something called spiritual suicide. Hallelujah. But when I come to him, I confess my faults to him. He's faithful and just to forgive me of my sin and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. And when I stand before him, I can stand. Why, brother preacher? Because I, what he wants to do tonight, when you give God your first fruit, what God wants to give you tonight is a filtered life. Anybody here beside me know what a filtered life is? Somebody said, how in the world can a, a sinner like me stand before just God? It's because God's going to look at me. Through the Jesus filter that's, gonna, that's covering me, amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hey, and he's not really going to see me. He's going to look through the blood of Jesus, and he's going to see what the blood paid for. What did it pay for, Brother Preacher? Well, let me tell you what. Here's what it paid for. Hallelujah. Jesus became my sin. Every last one of my sins, Jesus became. Maybe you hadn't heard a preach like that before. Jesus, God, who was perfect, became my sin. Past, present, future. He became my sin. And then, and then the same way uh, uh, he took off his, his divinity and, and put on his flesh, hallelujah. He took off his flesh and put on his divi divinity, hallelujah, and covered my sin. 
He said they got to be paid for, and the only thing they can pay for, hallelujah, is a perfect blood, and the only perfect blood is mine. Guess what? I'm going to die, hallelujah. And so even tonight, let me tell you, if you're going through something even right now, if you'll just for a minute go with me up Calvary's Hill, literally walk with me up Golgotha, and when we get there, the first thing I want you to do is I want you to rub your hand over the spear that the Roman soldier pierced his side with. Oh, it's real, hallelujah, to the Lamb of God. They pierced him in his side, hallelujah. Hey, he hung his head and he died for you and I. Feel it tonight, amen. After feeling the, that spear, I, I wish you'd just take a spike for just a minute in your spiritual mind and just hold it in the palm of your hand. Not a nail, but a spike. Hallelujah. It's real. And they drove. He allowed said for man to put a spike through his hands for you and I. Ain't no way. No man. Hallelujah. I don't care if he's a WWF champion, big and ugly, whatever his name is. Uh, uh, what, I don't even know who he is, but, but uh, I, uh, he couldn't hold God. Amen. So Jesus gave his life. He laid down. Hallelujah. And let him put spikes in his hands for you and I. He gave his life. Didn't nobody take it? Hallelujah. And while we're on Calvary's Hill, I wish you would just look with me at the dirt around the cross and its velvet because he gave his life's blood for you and I. He made it. He was the first fruit. Hallelujah. And he died. Hallelujah. But the good news is tonight, church, yes, he died. He, he settled a, a, a debt that we couldn't pay for. He died on the cross on Calvary. But the good news is, when they placed him in a borrowed tomb, you know when you borrow something, you ought to give it back. <laughs> Last time I was here, I think somebody borrowed my pen, Brian. Uh, <laughs> you ought to give it back. Hallelujah. Got a borrowed tomb, amen. Didn't need it for three days. He, went, he didn't go there to stay. When you place me in the ground, I ain't going there to stay. Hallelujah. Hey! The trump shall sound. Uh, the dead in Christ shall be raised incorruptible. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. That blood he gave. The cross couldn't hold him. And the, the grave couldn't hold him. Death couldn't hold him. Hell couldn't hold him. But when he got up, he said, All oh, power, heaven and earth is in my hand. I'm the first fruit. And he got up. Hallelujah. And all oh, power for God is on your side. And you ought to give him your first fruit. Yeah, right. How long has it been? How long has it been since you gave him first fruits? I began to ask God. I said, God, you mean we ain't been serving with first fruits? He said, you've been giving me crumbs from yesterday. You've been preaching with dead matter out of dead men's brains. And I've got something fresh for you, Curl. But you gotta, it, it takes something. You gotta give something to get something. You gotta put something in before you'll ever get anything in. I said, but Lord, it'd be so much easier just to ride along on this road here. No, no. That's not what I, I, I'm requiring in 2013. First fruits. Everyone understand my voice tonight? You gotta give something, God. You gotta give God something tonight for the first time. I don't care what it is. I, I, I don't know what it is. I, I don't have to know. But God is saying, everyone on the sound of my voice, I'm declaring tonight, give me first fruit. Maybe you've never forgiven the person. This is how good God is, and I hate to get off track, but I, uh, I was at the uh, funeral home the other night, and uh, while there, there was a guy there that had, 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 uh, Give me a hard time. I can't just put it that way just to be nice, but really, really, <laughs> it, when I was a young person, really misused me as a child. And the Lord said, you got to pray for this guy tonight. This guy said, I'm on my way out the door. I said, no, we're going to pray here in a minute. So the Lord made him and his wife stay. And you, and you don't know who he is. It doesn't matter. And so God positioned it that where I, when, I, when I prayed, I was going to be holding his hand, unsaved, 
undone. Died, almost, died last year. God gave him a reprieve. And God made me hold his hand. And as I prayed, and to pray specifically for this man right here. God says, you see, got to see 2013 is a new year. I can do what I want to do. You would have never put him there. You would have never held his hand. Amen. Amen. But God said, I'm in control. And that's the reason what you give tonight is going to be first fruit. Because it's from the mind of God. And it comes out of your heart. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. This man named Jesus loved you so much that not only did he die for you, but he didn't stay there. Not only did he walk these mundane shores for some 40 days, he got on a cloud and went back to glory. This same Jesus coming back in like manner. And he's coming back for the church without spot or wrinkle. You know what makes a spot and a wrinkle in a church? You. Not giving God first fruit. Is that me? I ain't touching nothing. <laughs> but it could be a spot or a stain to somebody's decision tonight. Rededication. Giving your all to God. Lord, I've seen you do it. I've seen you save in the graveyard. I've seen you save outside the service. I've seen you move in here. Switch the scripture. Why I'm back there in the back and the brother was trying to give me the light to show me. He said, what you doing? I don't know. God's doing it. And whatever he does is what goes. So tonight, the challenge is for everyone in this house, everyone in this house, to give God first fruits. Something you've never given him before. Don't give him some dead stuff. Don't give him some leftovers. Give him first fruit. Give him, give him, give him your whole being. Give him the next breath. Hallelujah. Give him access to that corner. Give him some, forgive that one. Give him first fruits. But give it to him. God, you've got, you've got to straighten us up. We need you right now, Lord. Father, I pray even right now as we come to this cross. Folk don't really even understand what, what was being said, but God, we just come right now. Because we know that it really happens at the foot of the cross. Father God, I can't be whole until I give up, until I die to self, hallelujah. I have to deny myself and realize that you carrying me, that it's you I must be yoked to. And I realize that you are the strong ox and I'm the weak ox. I realize you're carrying the burden and I'm just strapped to you and ain't carrying nothing. You're teaching me tonight. So, Father, I come right now. Thank you for bearing my burden, hallelujah, in the heat of the day. Father, we come right now. And we give you first fruits. Forgive us of our sins and our shortcomings. God, we give you all the praise, honor, and glory with every being in us. Hallelujah. Lord, either make us a worshiper or take our very lives tonight. We thank you for challenging us. We thank you for first fruits. We thank you for the privilege of being on your program. How we love you and how we praise you. In that name above every name. Tonight begins the beginning of the rest of my life. And every breath, I give you praise. Jesus' blessed name, God's church says.